interpreting scripture with the great tradition, recovering the genius of pre-modern exegesis. Fresh it in my mind. What is the difference between Platonism and Christian Platonism, and how um, wh- how do you define Christian Platonism and uh, in regards to our approach to hermeneutics? Well, Christian Platonism has been the one most controversial uh, topic in the book. This is where people uh, stumble. And um, I think in the end, I'm going to have to write a whole metaphysics book just to explain this, um, because it, it, the, the short explanations just haven't, haven't taken yet. First of all, the term Christian Platonism is a, it's a term that comes out of, of the historiography of philosophy. It's, it's a term that is primarily used by scholars descriptively to describe um, what happened in the fifth, fourth and fifth century AD. Um, so you, you have Greek philosophy beginning with the pre- pre-Socratics and coming through uh, Plato and Aristotle, and then there's a tradition that comes through Middle Platonism and, and, and the academics and so on into what is called Neoplatonism. And, and that, that tradition that we call Platonism is the central philosophical tradition in the ancient world. And so other schools of philosophy like the Epicureans and the Atomists and the Stoics um, are not as central as the central stream of Platonism. The church fathers in the fourth century and even before the fourth, even the second, third century, basically agreed with the Platon, the central Platonist tradition on a couple of key things. For one thing, they, they agreed that there must be something permanent and unchanging that is the cause of this changing world of flux. If, if this world of flux is, is, uh, is always changing, you see, you see a, an acorn growing into a, a, a twig and into a, a tree, and it, and it changes dramatically over the course of its lifespan. A human being goes from being a, a microscopic uh, union of cells in his mother's body to a fetus, to a child, to a man, to an old man, to a dead corpse. So what is it that, that gives continuity in, in the midst of all this change? What, 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 makes, what, what makes nature, you know, what makes things reproduce after their kind? What, what gives unity to, the, to a creature over its lifespan so that it's John Smith all the way from the beginning to the end? Well, the, 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 the fathers agreed with the Platonists that, that there must be something, there must be some way in which the individual things in this world participate in a universal uh, Plato's theory of forms, in it, something, there must be some way that the unchanging permanent r- world and this changing world interact. And so it's the, Pla- the platonic idea of universals, of participation, that uh, our nature, human nature participates in the universal of human nature. And that explains why human nature is constant. Well, the, the, the church fathers also agreed that there must be an immutable first cause, an eternal, simple, immutable first cause behind this world that causes this world. Now, the, the issue then for the fathers was, okay, if, if such a thing exists, it makes sense to call it God. How does that relate to the God of Israel, Yahweh, the, the God of the Bible? So if you say that, that the God of the Bible is not that immutable first cause of the universe, it looks like the God of the Bible is... A secondary thing with a a bigger God behind it. But that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that the God is the transcendent creator, the, the one who has brought everything that is not God into being. So the fathers were driven to identify the God of the Bible with the God of the philosophers. And um, and so that that and 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 and, and just to just to just to stress, the reason they were driven to do that was that was the only way they could think of to affirm and assert the absolute sovereignty and transcendence of God. So they, so they did not want to diminish God. They did not want to have Yahweh be like one of the gods in the Greek pantheon. He's not another Zeus or another Apollo. He's not a being among beings. He is somehow the cause of everything, the behind and above and transcendent of everything. Well, um, they ended up, 
they ended up taking this Greek idea of the immutable, simple, per, uh, eternal first cause, self-existent first cause, and they and they said, this is the transcendent creator of scripture, but he also speaks and acts in history. Now, nobody had ever said that, in, nobody had ever done that before, combined those two into one, but the fathers did. That's what I mean by Christian Platonism. For Augustine, uh, the, Augustine is basically saying the simple, perfect, eternal, self-existent first cause of the universe has uh, spoken and acted in the history of Israel, culminating in becoming incarnate in Jesus Christ, and that this, this is what we mean by Christian Platonism. It's Platonism because it believes that there's an immutable, simple first cause of this changing world of flux, but it's Christian because it says that simple, immutable first cause is actually the God of the Bible, the creator God. And this was, um, so Christian Platonism was, was that the Platonic tradition after Augustine was basically taken over and, and brought into Christianity. And, and it continues in a Christian form. And, and Augusta Aquinas is uh, more indebted to Augustine than anyone else. And when he integrates the rediscovered manuscripts of Aristotle into his, his Summa in the 13th century, he's continuing in the same kind of tradition as Augustine and the earlier fathers were of combining the um, God of the philosophers and the God of the Bible. So, so Christian Platonism was just a key moment in, in the development of, of philosophy and theology where Christians basically took over this platonic idea of God as the as this simple immutable first cause of the universe and said, you know, that's really, that's really Yahweh, the God of the Bible. And, and, uh, and then began to develop Christian theology based uh, going forward in, in such a way as to, um, as to, it, it was their way of affirming that God is really transcendent. He's really the creator of everything. There's nothing behind him that's greater than him or that precedes him. He is the ultimate source of all and, and therefore to be worshiped. Um, so that's, that's, that's the argument. So Christian Platonism is not as opposed to Aristotelianism. Christian Platonism is basically just saying that the, the central, some of the central ideas in that Platonic tradition um, are, are incorporated into Christian theology as being compatible with scripture. You know, for, for example, well, I could go on and on, but, but Exodus 3.14 becomes a key text. And, and that's and and the fathers think that what is being said in that text is that God has his existence as part of his essence. Mm -hmm. So um, so the idea there is that 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 he he is unique in that respect. Everything else is uh, everything else in the world um, has has existence in addition to its essence. And so that means it can in principle not exist. Um, it it might exist or not exist, whereas God is the only thing that must exist necessarily by his own essence, and that makes him utterly transcendent and different, and that's why he is the first cause of all things. So, so the Christians did not see this as, as um, going against scripture in any way. They saw it as a way of, of giving substance and form to what scripture teaches.